Diaz uh, with the West Point Museum. And we're here in the Gothel's Wing, would you call yes. it? Yes, the Gothel's Wing. All right, George W. Gothel's uh, was part of the West Point class of 1880. He is most known uh, as the engineer who completed construction of the Panama Canal. His career in the, in the United States Army spanned from his graduation in 1880 uh, through his second and final retirement from the United States Army in 1919. Uh, over the course of his career, he worked uh, as an engineer on a line staff out in the Pacific Northwest. He worked on canals in northern Alabama and in Tennessee. He worked at West Point as a professor of engineering. He also has experience in the Spanish-American War, where he was the chief engineer for the First Army Corps during the invasion of Puerto Rico. Goethals took over as chairman and chief engineer of the Isthmian Canal Commission in 1907, saw the project through to completion in 1914, and stayed on as the first governor of the Panama Canal Zone. And here, as we see uh, in this overview of his career, Goethals, Goethals himself and the army that he was a part of spanned a, a period of transition for the army. We went from traditional 19th century small enterprise that divided itself between a frontier constabulary mission and coastal fortifications work to a more modern, uh, highly organized enterprise according to 20th century managerial techniques uh, and principles that was capable of expeditionary warfare supporting a new, uh, more aggressive U.S. foreign policy as, as the United States became more of a player on the global scene. And with that, I'll turn it over to, to Mike to walk us through some of the artifacts that we have here. So we have here uh, artifacts across, or that, that span Gothel's career. Um, this map here that was executed when he was a cadet in 1878, and it shows uh, West Point from around uh, Lincoln Hall towards the beginning of the flirtation walk. You can see the beginning of the, the, the West Point, that famous S-curve in the Hudson, just beginning on the northern corner of the map. If you uh, look at the details, uh, it's a very craggy and uh, complex bit of, uh, bit of topography there. And you can tell the, uh, the great skill that he has as an engineer and as, a, as an artist uh, to capture this, uh, this very rough terrain uh, at that, that part of the, of the shoreline. Uh, here we have his... Uh, Page um, and uh, identification tags. Uh, Goethals uh, pride, uh, prided himself as approaching his, uh, his position as something of an everyman, uh, so he would uh, present himself in person with an ID card to, uh, to the paymaster every, uh, every other Friday. And, uh, the one on the left is, uh, is from his time on the Canal Commission, uh, the one on the right is as his term as governor. Survey. Those 
those are pretty basic skills. This is in 1878, not an army that's prepared to build a canal through Panama, which involves digging through uh, a, a, the Continental Divide. The army at 1878 is in no way, in no way, equipped to do this. In fact, arguably, by the time that we get to the point where the army takes over the project, in, in cooperation with their civilian counterparts, the army still isn't fully ready to do it. It's just that these, the introduction of modern managerial techniques has introduced enough of a knowledge base that they might be able to improvise their way there. Worth noting that when Goebbels took over the Panama Canal project, the size of the workforce and the operating budget was roughly equivalent to half of the entire United States Army at that time. And at that time, the Army didn't even train its core commanders to do things like this. And they entrusted this, uh, this project to who, an officer who was at that time a criminal. Yeah. It's, uh, it's surprising uh, that so much power would be given to uh, someone that isn't even, that hasn't even made general yet. Absolutely surprising, absolutely. And as you pointed out, Goethe's everyman character, this was part of his managerial technique. Okay, Goethe's, as, as Mike ably pointed out, uh, prided himself on the fact that he personally went to collect his pay, his, his pay just like everybody else did, whether it's one of his subordinate division chief engineers or it was a laundry worker working in one of the, uh, one of the cantonments where they kept, kept the workers. This was something that Goethe's prided himself on so that everybody felt that they were equally invested in the work. But, but that said, these, these, these tokens of, of that everyman persona, uh, these weren't the only, the only ways that, that Goethe's let that style of management uh, govern how he acted in the canal zone. Uh, quite famously, he would open his house and office every Sunday morning. They called it Sunday morning court. Anybody who had any grievance could come to him and air their grievance. If he believed their, their uh, if he believed that their complaint had merit, uh, he would launch an investigation. He had an entire subsection of his headquarters staff that was devoted to investigating workers' complaints. If he did not believe that it had merit, he heard them out and politely sent them on their way, uh, hoping, and in many cases rightly so, that just the very act of being able to express their complaints, their grievance, uh, to the man in charge in the canal zone would be a boon for morale. You know, the predecessor to modern open door managerial policies. Absolutely. Mike, thank you so much uh, for sharing these artifacts with us. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. I've enjoyed the, enjoyed the discussion. Uh, to everybody watching, these are uh, but a few of the, the treasures here in the West Point Museum, and I, I strongly encourage you to come down and take a look. Uh, if this scratches your interest, there are hundreds and hundreds of more, more things to, to look at and, and dive, dive into. Uh, thanks for coming down. We're always happy to help out the history department. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.